moving on, Showtime on Saturday. Erickson Lubin fighting Nathaniel Gallimore, obviously, since uh, who was... Oh, um, to, uh, to Matt's got straight, straight past uh, Shakur Stevenson world title shot again. <laughs> I, well, I'll be honest. Like, look, Shakur, you are technically fighting for a world title, but in terms of name value, you're a, a lesser name than Robert Easter and even Erickson Lubin in a way. So, In a way, when you have to say in a way. Yeah, I mean, because, like, Shakur, if he's listening, he would come back and say, well, I'm fighting for a belt. But Lubin's fought better opponents. Robert Easter was a champion. And his fight is a much better fight than against Joe Gon- Gonzalez, in my opinion. But digressing. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's a good fight, but not not Easter Granados, in my opinion. But digressing. Lubin, Gallimore. It should be competitive until it's not, in my opinion. And what I mean by that is I think Gallimore is... Rugged and durable enough, and he is he has basic talent enough to contend for, let's say, three to four rounds. But I think Erickson Lubin's been developing with each fight. I think he's really growing into a true world-level top 10 fighter when before he was kind of just shoved in that position when he wasn't ready and wasn't really built in, hadn't really built the, the ability and the skill for that. Now he has that. So I think by round four or five, he should 100% take over this fight and probably get Gallimore out within the next two to three rounds after that. So round seven or eight, expect a TKO stoppage from Erickson Lubin, in my opinion. I think Lubin, again, is just a better boxer. He's a heavier hitter. And again, he is developing his talent far more uh, lately than basically anyone else on this card, but especially against his opponent. Um, Gary, thoughts on Lubin Gallimore? I like this fight. Um, I, I like it because Gallimore was one of those guys who was kind of hyped, like uh, when he beat Jason Rosario um, and uh, Justin Deloach. Yeah, yeah. like it, this guy's got it, and it, there was never anything really more to him. It was like, okay, he'll beat that level of fighter, but he'll lose to everyone at the top. This is a really good test for Lubin. I, I think Lubin wins, but I think this is fun. I think this is something that Lubin has. To, and he may stop him late, but I'm going to pick him by decision. But I think this is a fight where he has to dig deep, and he's going to have to win some rounds at the end to close the show here. Like I, I think uh, Gallimore is going to have some moments. He's going to win some rounds. I think he's a good boxer. Um, I, I think this is an excellent test for Lubin that I, I think he passes in, in a very competitive fight. Rob, thoughts on Erickson Lubin versus Nathaniel Gallimore? Uh, let me just check ITV's boxing skit. Uh, nope. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I expect Lubin to come through this. Although I believe Gallimore, he can punch. He's a heavy hitter, yeah, for sure. Crack. So um, maybe he'll find that that Charlo that button that Charlo found, you know, and leave uh, Lubin in a, a a wreck that he, <laughs> he was before. But um, yeah, I expect Lubin to come through this. I think I think it's a decent test and on the right sort of trajectory to get back to sort of I think it's been good in a way that if he was going to lose to Charlo then he, you know whatever he's he's coming back building back and I think it's been slower rather than he was seemed to be thrust into the the Charlo fight and people were like hyped at the time and I think I mean if we saw that fight again at that stage I think things would have been different or absolutely. it would have gone longer or it just walked onto us, sh- you know, it just no, absolutely. Look, I mean, you can make an honest and easy argument that Lubin should have fought all these guys. He fought after Charlo before he ever fought Charlo. Yeah. You know, guys like Isha Smith, he should have fought before he fought Charlo. Clearly like that. I don't know why he stepped from Jorge Cota, a guy that no one's heard of. And went from that to Jamel Charlo, a guy that was a surging champion at the time. Made no sense. People pick, I was one of them, but people pick Lubin to win that yeah, fight. I, I mean, not a lot, but there were many people who did. Because no, they, 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 they had a great promotional machine around Lubin. They really did. Like they, For some reason, it connected. Lubin connected. He was on big cards, too. He had some good flashy knockouts. And the machine was behind them, man. The PBC machine, Showtime machine. At that time, you know, you had CBS, Fox, NBC, and other networks, too, that were in play. Lubin just had a really neat, like, decent push comparative to a lot of other guys. There's also no shame in losing to a Texas fighter. <laughs> Moving on. 
Uh, Robert Easter Jr. fighting Adrian Granados in the co-main event in another sort of crossroads fight for both guys, you know, sort of switching back to the other card. Easter, I mean, you guys know, Rob knows, right? I've always been a fan of Robert Easter as a fighter. I've always thought he's been a fun uh, boxer to watch. But clearly, the guy has not progressed in some time. And the Rancis Bartholomew fight was noticeably bad. So I have a real hard time understanding or trying to sort of predict, I should say, what Robert Easter is showing up here, how he looks. This is at 140 now. It's against Granados, who's a heavy hitter, a guy that honestly has only lost some of the best fighters out there, right? Like Granados doesn't lose to B-level guys. He loses to A-level guys. And he beats the other B-level guys. So if Easter is really, you know, a guy that truly should have lost to Fortuna and all these other guys, which definitely there's an argument for that, then Granados kind of should win this one. Even though Granados is coming off of a massive knockout loss uh, from Danny Garcia back in February or March. However, this is going to be a true test of Robert Easter. How much more does he have in the tank in terms of at the elite level? Uh, and I think this is clearly a, a, a fight to sort of test that out from Al Heyman and PBC. They clearly want to see what else do we have here with Easter? You know, how, how good is this guy? He should be better. Why is he not better? Let's have a fight Granados, who's sort of the perennial gatekeeper, it seems, at 140 and 147. Guys, thoughts on this fight? Any sort of prediction? I'm going to pick Easter by decision, but I do that with no confidence at, at, at all. Like, I think Easter should win at distance, but I don't know. It's Easter. I'm going to pick Granados. I, 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 I think Granados lost a lot of the fights because he was fighting 47 pounders. Like, Granados always said, okay, I'll fight this one at 47, but then I'm going back down to 40. And then Al would give him another 47 pounder, right? So, like, I, I think he belongs at 40, and I think he's going to have more pop, and I think he's going to be stronger, and I think he wears him down. He may lose a bunch of rounds, but I think he's going to be – Losing the fight, but winning the storyline, and I think he stops him late. Tenth round knockout. Rob. Uh, By the way, tenth round is the last round in the fight. It's not twelve. Oh, round this eight. is this is. All right, I'll but, stick with it then. Just, just in case that yeah. you know change anything, you know. Uh, it meant I don't have to see two extra rounds of Robert Easter not boxing it to his dimensions. Uh, then yeah, great. Can we have a six rounder? Um, <laughs> no, um, I've never been a fan of Easter for some reason. I just don't like how he fights. Um, it's frustrating, open. you know. It, he he's like obviously to a better degree, right? Because he like achieved far more. But like he's, I would I would imagine it would be like the same frustration as like I have with like Okoli, like a guy that clearly has like this frame, the power, speed. Just, like, be a better boxer, please. Like, how are you not, like, developing your boxing ability at all, for the love yeah. of God? You you have all the tools there. Like, why aren't you putting it together better? Um, but Easter, obviously, is far more uh, has achieved far more than Okoli. But I think that sort of similar issue of you have this long reach, long sort of uh, height, uh, 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 tall height advantage. You know, just the overall size in your division is just... It's ginormous. Like, why aren't you using this? Yeah, I just don't see that he's ever put that. You know, he could have been an absolute beast in the division, I think. But I don't know. But um, and you know, shout out to Granados for coming in and taking the fight, and we haven't had the Bartholomew rematch. Um, oh, thank God. Ooh, this is a fe- this is a far better fight, and plus, it's Easter going to one forty. Stay at one forty. You know, I I yeah. know he's been talking about going back down at one thirty five. I don't want to see that. Please stop. <laughs> why um uh but yeah no uh i don't know just purely for the dislike <laughs> for robert easter i'm gonna pick granados quickly hassan's in easter by boredom probably um no i don't think it's gonna be bore i don't think it's gonna be boredom i think it's granados is a fun fighter he usually puts in fun fights i'm gonna wait for twitter to tell me the result and see the reaction well of course you're gonna be sleep- whether i bother with daily motion or well, you're gonna be sleeping the whole time and uh, yeah. Hassan Malik saying, yeah, so y'all don't like tall inside fighters. No, I don't mind tall inside fighters. I'll, uh, let's say Jared Hurd, right? Jared Hurd's a tall inside fighter. But you have to be good at it. 
You know, like Easter's not a good inside fighter. And the comparison I use, obviously, a Coley, definitely not a good inside fighter. Um, Jared Hurd, a tall guy, but he's an inside fighter. He's really good at it, really efficient at it. Yeah, he lost, obviously, to J-Rock, but he's still obviously a really efficient inside fighter. You know, I mean, the old school version or person I always use is like a James Tony. Like James Tony at 160 was a tall inside fighter. One of my favorite fighters of all time, but he was good at it. You know, to be a tall guy and who's taller than your opponents with longer reach, but still be on the inside, it takes like another level of skill and talent, actually. Like it's it's far easier to be the short, stocky guy to, to get on the inside. Just naturally how your body is framed and how your body is wired. You know, um, but digression from that. Paul Williams. Oh. Great big inside fighter. Yeah. Yes, Paul Williams. Good shout out. Um, the rest of this card is not too. <laughs> it's not anything to be on. like the Omar the, Douglas is on the card. Uh, I really like watching Omar Douglas. I will give a shout out to Omar Douglas. <laughs> wow, because like a lot of these fights just got announced like in, like yesterday, the day before, right? Um, oh, a veto. Um, that big time prospect, the amateur prospect that just got picked up, veto. Uh, men. The, the kid from Jersey. Yes. 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 That kid. Yeah, that guy. That guy. He's I on can't say his last name either. No, and I, oh, I, let I, me have a go. Let me have a go. But first, someone in the chat says, is that the guy from The Shining? Who? <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> Gary. Oh, my God. Um, which, wait, 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 wait. I need to find this guy. I'm going to say the name. It's Vito wait. Manicki. If it's Vito Nicky, if it is le- legitimately spelled, no, no, like no, that, no, 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 Vito, you didn't hear me, Vito Manicky. Oh, man, oh, I think that's right. That may be right. Manicky. I'm gonna fight. Wait, wait, wait. So, what card's this? The, um, the Lumen card. Oh yeah. Let me go back. <laughs> great, uh, great, great radio right here, guys. I love it. Good. It'll give people time to press. That thumbs up. It'll give people time to press the thumbs up, won't it? And share the show. And subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that fun stuff. And maybe even right. go to patreon.com forward slash mixed combat radio. If you feel adventurous out there. Rob, you found it yet? Yep. It's towards How the bottom. You it? I said Maniki. Maniki. Yes. <laughs> even though it's I E L, then Nikki. Nikki. Wait, yeah. there's an L in there? Yeah, look, before the N. That's an L? Is it not? <laughs> Mike, hey, my screen's far away. You have to remember that, man. Like, I, I don't have my computer right in front of me like you guys. Or actually, this isn't my computer. This is my I'm monitor. I'm going Vito Mielnicki Jr. Mielnicki. Mielnicki? Meal. Like, meal. Anyways, moving on. Uh, yeah, why I, are we talking about him anyway? I remember because well, he was a big time prospect. Like, he, uh, oh, he, he run a bunch of golden uh, gloves. I okay. Think, cool. Yeah. Like, he was a. Amateur guy, like that, just became pro, uh, a yeah, pro fighter. Too so. at the moment. Yeah, that's why I just wanted to quickly mention yeah. him, but oh, it turned cool. into, "Hey, let's try to pronounce his name." Uh, moving on. 